Welcome back to another episode of Photography Tips and Tricks, your show for photography, gear review, inspiration, tips, tricks, techniques, anything that you can think about to get your photography over to the next level. Now, I wanted to kind of give you guys a tip for the season finale. It's almost kind of like a, a non-tip tip. It's, it, think of it as almost kind of a homework exercise. Here I have a camera, right? Nikon D4, 85 millimeter, 1.4. Right? That doesn't really matter. But what matters is this, we, we obsess over the amount of gear that we get and that we have. And when it comes down to actually doing a shoot with it, how comfortable are we with everything that we have here? Like, not features or techniques or wh what you can do with it, but if I were to do this without looking and I grabbed this button, could I tell you what this button is? Could I tell you what this button is? If I hold this to my eye, can I change any setting that I have here by pressing and holding it down and moving these things? Guys, that's probably one of the most important lessons that you have when working with your camera. The more you explore with it and the more you get into the habit of knowing where each button, each nuance, how to manipulate all of that stuff without doing this and putting it to your eye, the more prepared you are when you're faced with a subject, when you're faced with a situation. That is my homework to you, you know? I would do this. I would take my camera, put it to your eye and go, oh, wait a minute, I need to change my ISO. Do you know how to do that? Can you do that without looking at the back, without looking at the top? Can you put your hands around the camera and find what you need when you need it? There's, there's a saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, right? So you wanna practice so that the amount of time that you have here is minimized. That's also gonna help you with something else. Like over the weekend, I was doing Help Portrait, right? Help-portrait.com, it's a great movement. And there, what we were doing is we were taking pictures of people in need. That person is already self-conscious, that person is already has, brings so much to that side of the equation, and our job is to make a wonderful picture of them. There's nothing wonderful about spending time doing this. Uh, hold, hold up, sorry, uh, it's this, almost there. That doesn't help. So the more you spend time looking, accessing, making this as comfortable as you can, the better your photography is gonna get. Not tip related, not function related. It's all about where it is and can you get to it. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got LA-based photographer Joel Grimes, who's gonna share with us how to use a very specific lens in a very non-traditional way. Stick around. Hey folks, Moose here. A little birdie told me you want to learn wildlife photography. We're going to talk about everything from the basics. How do you find critters? What brings them in? I'm going to cram in more biology in this program than you could probably imagine. Because we take that biology and combine it with that technology, the camera stuff, you come back with great images. What works for background works for exposure. The incredible most important secret the perch we're going to talk about camera settings we're going to talk about flash settings we're going to talk about camera placement we're going to talk about short lenses long lenses i'm going to help you incorporate it to wherever you live be it in the middle of an island in the mountains the desert yep i'm going to invite you to come to my home my office spend some time learn some of my friends and neighbors how to take the best portrait of them possible this is an exclusive you're going to see only on Kelby Training. So come along into the great jungle of my backyard. Welcome back, everybody, to Photography TNT. This is RC. Now, listen. I've got a phenomenal photographer for you guys here. We have LA portrait artist, photographer extraordinaire, Mr. Joel Grimes, to share with us a very, very specific technique with a very, very non-specific lens. Take a look at this. Thanks, RC. What I like to do is I like to create a lens that does not exist on the planet and or create, um, say, even just thinking outside the box, so to speak. And I used to shoot large format, the view cameras and all that. And here I have a 17 tilt shift. And obviously it's used for architectural uh, work and you can shift it up and down and get your perspective correct. But what I like to do is I actually take this lens and I'll shift it to the left and I do my, art, my backgrounds and I'll take an HDR 
three, three exposure click, and then I'll shift it to the right, take my three exposure click, and then in Photo Merge, in Photoshop, I put the two together. I end up with a 36 megapixel capture on a 20, this is a 22 megapixel camera, the 5D Mark III. So I'm getting more pixels, but not just that, I'm getting a lens that does not exist on the planet. It's a 17 perspective, but I get like maybe a 14 angle view. view. I also do the same with it this way. I'll shoot uh, a set of exposures up on top, middle, and down, and there I get more like a 45 megapixel capture. So I'm getting more out of my camera, I'm getting a lens that doesn't exist on the planet, and it's just kind of fun, and that's kind of uh, the, those backgrounds that I'm getting, those wide perspectives, is really, this is the way I do it, so thank you. Now, that's one of those things that I appreciate so much when we're working with Joel or when we're looking at artists of these caliber. If you want to see more about this, you are going to absolutely love what Joel is doing over at KelbyTraining.com. Make sure that you take a look at that. Now, before we go, I have a quick tip for Mr. Dave Black. Take a look at this one. Hey, welcome back everybody. I'm here with legendary photographer, Mr. Dave Black. Dave, how are you? RC, good to be here with you. Now, I'm a big fan of Dave Black, so he does a lot of different work. So I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about Dave Black. Dave, for those who don't know or aren't mm -hmm. familiar with the work, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been kind of at photography now for almost 33 years, mostly sports, but I uh, do a, a lot of lighting as well, both with strobes, speed lights, and light painting. So, right, so you have some amazing images, and you've worked with people like you know, Sports Illustrated mm -hmm. and Newsweek, and you've covered 12 Olympic Games, which That's I thought was just... Pretty phenomenal. Anyway, my experience with Dave Black has always just been, like, he'll, he's at Photoshop when he's running through these slideshows and it's just amazing, amazing work. I haven't really felt the time in, in a very, very long time where I've been excited yet completely frustrated <laughs> with my photography. And the time that I saw your slideshow, it was, it was absolutely moving. Well, Those very kind words, R.C. Absolutely Appreciate moving. it. Thanks. So, now, you're here to give us a tip for detail. You bet. So, tell you us bet. a little bit. What's, what you well, got? mostly what I do is sports photography. That's action and so forth. And we always think today is that the Autofocus is sort of the way to pull in the subject, you know, while a racing bike or the football players running at you or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But I get a lot of emails uh, asking me about, you know, well, I can't seem to get the autofocus to pick up or whatever. And a lot of times it involves an athlete or the subject coming around what I call a blind curve or I can't see the subject advancing until the last split second. And so there's something that we do in sports industry called zone focusing. That's not a setting on the camera, but what you do is on the back of the camera here, there's an AF-L, that's autofocus lock button right there. And what I can do is I can pre-focus on a zone, on an area where I know my athlete's going to run in through. I can pre-focus on that zone or that area, press the autofocus lock, that locks it down. Now when they come through that zone, as they run around the corner, maybe they're just track runners, I can just like take three, a burst of three. One out of those three will be usually tack sharp right on them as they advance right through the zone or plane of focus. Nice, very, very, very so handy. Don't worry about it. And a lot of the times, I've always wondered about that. Like I saw exactly. on your okay, training class, you have a motorcycle coming around the entire area, and I'm like, well, what if he didn't see the advancing part? Like, what if you didn't get that much lead up? Like, how would you deal with most of that stuff? That's an exact example right there. We had that on the speed light video where we were using speed lights to light up motocross riders. And as he came through there, he came right around the corner. I couldn't see him, came right through the zone. We already auto-focus lock, right through there. Perfect. Worked out wonderful, good. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Now, if you want to take a look at more stuff for Dave Black, you can go to daveblackphotography.com or the series of classes that have been wildly popular. You've had some really good classes. Oh, we've had a good time so, with it. We just worked on one on light painting down here, which is a lot of fun. We made some. Just between you and me, I think I made a portfolio image during one of the light painting sessions. I so. saw the picture on the back of the camera and I looked at it and I was just like, oh my God, you have to see this. So make sure you take a look at it on KevinTraining.com. Dave, it's always a pleasure. RC, thanks for having me here. Hello, my name is Lindsay Adler and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York. York, it is filled with creative, passionate people. There are makeup artists, hairstylists, wardrobe stylists that love what they do. In fashion, there are no rules. It's all about your creativity. 
So when I'm doing a fashion shoot, I can focus on the lighting, on the models, on the poses, and instead I have everybody else adding their own creative contributions. It's whatever vision I have in my mind, I can make it a reality. Welcome back, everybody. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I had never thought in a million years to use a tilt shift lens, something like this, it's largely used for architecture, in that manner, and that's one of the reasons we absolutely love Joel when he comes by. Do yourself a favor. This is the website to watch this week. This is joelgrimes.com. He has some absolutely amazing portraiture work. He's got some amazing beauty work. He's got some killer fashion work. He blogs, he hosts workshops. It would be something that we would highly recommend for you to experience Mr. Joel Grimes himself live or over on Kelpie Training. That's the website that we want you to take a look at for this last show. Now, it's contest time, right? You're probably wondering, what's with the purse? Well, it's yours, at least one of you. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go to kelbytv.com forward slash contest. Go ahead and put in your name, put in your email address. Leave us an idea for the show for the next season. Tell us how we're doing. Tell us what you want to see. One of you guys is going to start off by winning this Kelly Moore photography bag, right? We wanted to make sure that we included the ladies here. So ladies, you or if you're a guy, you're going to be giving this to a lady. You guys are going to enjoy it. It's a wonderful, wonderful bag, right? And I like the fact that it's very, very stylish. However, it does, I mean, this is a photography bag. It holds cameras, big strap, the whole nine yards. So one of you guys is going to win this. Actually, you know what? One of you is going to win all of this. Plug-in book. Nicole S. Young, who's done some phenomenal food work and other stock work, books of those nature, is now doing a new book called Plugin with On One Software. So you'll get this. If you're a user of On One Software, you're going to want this book. You're absolutely going to want this book. Those are the two things. The third thing, this. The Oben CT3400 tripod with a BB0T ball head. So that is a 12.4 system load capacity with a maximum height of 58.2. Guys, that is well over five feet. Amazing. You're gonna get all of that stuff. You extend the column. By the time you put your camera on top of it, you're done. It's beautiful, right? So you're gonna win the tripod, you're gonna win the bag, you're gonna win the book. All of this stuff on the last episode of Photography Tips and Tricks. Guys, we totally appreciate all of you guys watching. We appreciate all the comments that come in. We want to do one more thing. Next Tuesday, we're having a special webcast. This is over at photoshopuser.com forward slash webcast. I'd like to ask you to do one thing for me. Tuesday, go to photoshopuser.com forward slash webcast and tell a friend. This is going to be a special Napathon that we do. We're part of the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, and every year we like to sit down and tell people about some of the new things that we're doing and some of the things that are gonna be completely groundbreaking at the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. So I want you guys to go there, and I want you to, more importantly, tell a friend to come. So the two of you should be there next Tuesday. So on behalf of everybody that's here, Larry Becker, Matt, Scott, Joel Grimes, and myself, Happy holidays. We will see you guys at the next season of Photography Tips and Tricks. Take care.